industry invaders. You know it is your boy Cameron Eleven Eleven. The YouTube's Rick Eddie here, and I'm back with an absolute banger. How Drake just got even more pathetic. Now, first things first. I have been out of the loop with the Eminem and Meg. That I'm dropping that video today as well. But I want to know what in Drake, what in God's name had Drake possess Drake to rap on BBL Drizzy? Like, come on, man, that's a mistake. How y'all doing out there? Happy Friday, TGIF, man. It's Friday. Toast. Thank y'all for all the love and support. That's a mistake, bro. That's goofy. And check me out. Drake proved Kendrick right with every in every chance he get. Every time we compare Drake, we compare him to women. Every time. Every time we see him with Sexy Red, it's too bad. The, what is the first feature he come out and do? Sexy Red. Like, it's sad. It then the kids. The thing that's happened to Drake like, this is bad. After a ton of music leaks from artists like himself, Kanye West, Travis Scott, and Kendrick Lamar hit the internet. Yeah, it's bad out here. One of the most jarring discoveries to all of the lost music media that was discovered was a reference track to the eighth song of Drake's 2018 album, Scorpion. Yeah, Mob yeah. That was performed and written by Vory. And while even recently, Crazy word. Like and how do you, and let me know how y'all how do y'all feel about these leak uh reference tracks and these leaks leaks just being you know brought to light. Uh Meek started it. Meek let us know in 2015, 2014 that yo bro, he doesn't even create his own material. We laughed and clowned at Meek. We we got on Meek ass, we shitted on Meek, right? But now you look up 2024, you know, uh nine years later. And it's gotten even worse. It got to the point now where he doesn't even change the lines of the, the reference tracks. He's just, you know, like it's, it just got really bad. It's really pathetic. Really pathetic. Loss, and also Cash Cobain with calling for you from For All the Dogs. These reference tracks leaking didn't And that's sad though, y'all, because that was actually my favorite song off For All the Dogs. I didn't really like For All the Dogs as a whole. I thought it was gimmicky, really bad. I thought it was really bad. That's definitely his worst. And people don't like Anderson Nevermind, but for all the dogs, it's definitely his worst body of work for sure. Like, for sure. Like, it ain't even close. Even stain Drake or prove anything to us that we did it's sad out here, man. Know. As with these songs saying absolutely nothing of substance or meaning anything, Drake ain't even Drake out here no more. Bangers that showcase Drake evolving with the times. Outside of showing that Drake is just copying and pasting the mold set by younger and hotter artists to hop on their ways, yep. these tracks showed us nothing groundbreaking nothing. But with mob ties. This tells us something completely different and way more troubling about not just the way Drake makes music, but about who he really is deep down inside as a man. And let me exactly, and not only let me piggyback off that. The mob ties reference track is so disheartening and so disappointing because. He went on an interview, multiple interviews, especially the one, especially the Rap Radar interview, and said, yo, when this is what happened when you makes me mad, you get songs like Mob Ties, you get songs like Nonstop, you get songs like this and that and that and this. He's he's championing these records and he's raving the, the crown at these records as if he created them. In reality, bro, it's not even your bag. So when we hear Mob Ties, when we hear non-stop when we hear upset bro it ain't even you you just yeah you recorded and tracked it but we we got you reference tracks of other line. people You'll doing the work like bro anything drake has said in his music is even real yeah so with the song mob ties it's important and, to remember but y'all it goes back to what i've been saying since the first industry invaders video what has drake told us on his albums what has he really told us what has he really shown us be for real. And I'm talking about since day one. Think about the so far gone. Think about the, the comeback seasons. Think about what is he saying on these bodies of work, y'all? That was all my whole point. Time in hip -hop that this song released what is he saying? For Drake. How important a cut like this was for his career and reputation at the time. Now, right before this track, and for that matter, the entire Scorpion album came out. Drake was on the hottest seat of his career at the time yep, after yep, being yep. beaten by Pusha T in one of the most diabolical ways that any rapper 
happy it has ever been won with a song like the story of that enough. With Mob yeah. Ties, it is clear that Drake was alluding to what went down with Push throughout this song in addition to him. The whole first half of the album. Drake was also in the height of their beef with at the time because yep. Drake believed that Ye leaked Push the information about his long lost kid. And with this track's personal lyricism that takes such close aim to Drake's biggest rivals at the time, having it all be written and performed by another artist it's would just, already that's be one sad. Thing. But the fact that during his interview yep. with LeBron James is yep. the shop all the way back in 2018, when Drake was addressing this beef and really trying to explain how he wasn't as big of a loser that everybody thought and that he was actually a victim, he said Crazy. that after Push's story of Adonai, Instead of feeding into that energy and clapping back at him with more diss tracks, Drake was above this and just yeah. put this energy right back into the Scorpion album as he said that he created yeah. like in my feelings non-stop and most importantly to his confidence, demeanor, and credibility at the time yeah. of ties, yeah. which was a big moment that really asserted that while Drake still may have been embarrassed, he was still able to show that he can be feared on the mic. Yeah, but guess Drake what? It's not even from him. He lied. And y'all worship him. He lied, bro. Drake is a fraud. He made when his career was facing some perceived conflict at the time. And straight up labeling it as this moment where Sad, he bro. that it was still so powerful and unbeatable. And even tried to go as far to convince people on television that he won the beef by making cuts like this. Now that we have heard this reference track from Vori, who has wrote and performed the song, yeah. we are seeing that Drake is just straight up comfortable to lie to even somebody as respected and great as LeBron James, and just try to make what he is doing seem like something else and make it fit a narrative that strengthens his image at the expense of being transparent. And from a moment like this, to even the hard part six where Drake just gasped It's sad, bro. For six it's minutes. sad. I ain't gonna because lie. Yeah. everything that's coming to light, whether it's the social media user who debunked Drake's story of him setting up Kendrick with the item seen on diss tracks like Beat the Grams, or it's this moment right here, where one yep. of Drake's most important songs personally when it came to saving his reputation in his career was not yep. even written by him. Drake's tendency to not just bend the truth, but completely fabricated. Professional manipulator. Kendrick said. Is a recurring pattern for man. And when we see that Drake could even lie about the nature of songs, even when his character is being questioned most, it really makes you sit and wonder what else he has lied about. Yeah, what else are you lying about? We have found out were ghostwritten by other artists over the years. This is without a doubt the worst one we have ever gotten because while songs like 10 Bands or any of the other songs recently are tracks that were made to be bangers and turned down the substance all to be catchy. While Mob Ties does have its catchy moments, it's a pretty personal cut from Drake that was supposed to be letting us into his mind and emotional state in a time where he believed he could not trust anyone in his career and now. To find out that even with Push revealing his kid and him and Ye not being in a good place and overall just being conflicted on if there are people around him who are leaking out info, to see that even a song like this was not made by him and was simply designed to not just mimic Drake's cadences and vocal pockets, but also what he is feeling within his own head more than ever. And it's so crazy though, y'all, because when you really, really sit back and think about it, it's like, damn, we really thought the Scorpion album was some of his best work for the simple fact. Just at that time, we thought it was some of his best work because it was more intimate, more personal. You know what I'm saying? It was fresh off of a beef that he lost. We ain't never seen him lose a, a beef. So at that time, he lose a beef or lose a battle or whatever. He's coming off of that. And he just straight up lied to us, y'all. He straight up lied to us. And K-Dot told us, yo, he's a master manipulator. He's not who y'all think he is. He doesn't even create his own material. He doesn't take care of his kids. He's a master manipulator. He prefers to date women between the ages of 15 and 18. Like, it's just so much that came out. And all Drake could do is pull the I got you card and say, I tricked you and had you fall for it. It's great cap. And personally, y'all, like I told y'all, I ain't rocking with Drake. I can't, I can't. Because he's not like us. You know who he is, your boy Cam 1111, the YouTube's Rick of the Year. Make sure you like, share, subscribe if you're new. I'm signing out, y'all, love.